Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, folks? It's that time. It's time for an exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show where we talk about all things like music, motivation, success, and of course, so much more stuff. Always happy to be joined, Mike. By my co-host, co-producer, longtime friend, Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. What's up, Jim? How are you, sir? Doing great. Uh-huh. Hey, this this mic got all sorts of roomy. It got roomy all of a sudden. I think it kind of like it doesn't like the being yelled at. I guess. Maybe, oh, I, I just need know. to just stop yelling into it. Maybe. Oh, that's. Much I'll, I'll work on it. It's, it's much a, warmer right there. It's a continuous. I think uh, it was picking up from other mics. Maybe. Yeah, kind of sounds like. We're, we're we're getting some input from our guest today because he's not only a world class drummer but a, he's a fantastic engineer, hailing originally Fort Smith, Arkansas, calling Nashville home since two thousand six. He's an ACM award winning. Drummer of the Year. He's played with folks like Kenny Chesney, Reba McIntyre, Luke Bryan, Jimmy Allen, Ronnie Dunn, Keith Urban, Stephen Tyler, Toby Keith, Maddie, and T- it just the list goes on and on. Our friend Evan Hutchings. What's up, pal? What's going on? I'm so sorry, ex- man. I am so excited to be in the room with you because we we're just like our thumbs are sore from texting because you're such a busy guy. It's like herding cats. Literally, we got yes. you here. Talk to my wife too. So, about so, that. Well, the thing is, is that <laughs> you family your guys, stuff. you blow me away. Because the, the the fact that, you know, you make the hall every day to work on Music Row, you got your own projects going on, and you're a family man. Yeah. So that's a lot. It's a lot going on. Well, I appreciate you Not making, making time there. for us. Absolutely, man. I'm glad yeah. it worked out. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Thank so, you for having me. Of course. Now, um... Tell us, like, you know, we could go back. We could start with what you're working on now. We're, there's so much stuff that we can talk about. But you moved to Nashville in 2006. So we can start there, or you can kind of, like, take us back. I know for a fact that so many drummers start their journey playing in church, and I think yeah. that was your journey. Yeah, yeah, that's where it started for me. Two years old. Um, that's so young. Up on the kit, I know. So the story goes, my dad tells is that they were having worship band practice. This was actually in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and the drummer wasn't there yet. And, uh, or he had went to use the restroom or something like that. (laughs) I don't know. And then I hopped up on the kit and they just thought he was there. You know, they thought, oh, the drummer's here. And they looked back and couldn't see anybody. And it was a little two-year-old me. And to me, that means maybe the drummer wasn't that good. <laughs> maybe it sounded like a two-year-old drummer. <laughs> Do you remember who this guy was? I don't. Oh, I don't yeah. remember who he was. I'm sure he was a great drummer. But anyway, yeah. So I was just always drawn to the drums. And during church, every Sunday, you know, we were at church. It was Sunday morning service, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you know. So, And I was there all the time. After school, go to the church, hang out, play drums. Me and my sister and cousins, they were always there. So we formed bands together. Was your dad the preacher? He was the pastor. Oh, a pastor. The head pastor, yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was the the senior pastor. Just retired, actually, two weeks ago. Wow. Pretty well. 42 years. Big congrats. It's a long time. Good for him. Yeah. Amazing. That's a lot of pressure. Every Sunday, you got to come up with a new message. Yeah. And he would, so he would preach at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 10.45, 6.30 on Sunday. Radio show, TV show, Wednesday night at 7. All different sermons, all different things. All different. Busy guy. Yeah, busy. Yeah. busy Talking about getting your speaking reps in. <laughs> Literally. Oh yeah, and plus you were probably just like raised to be like a, 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 a very respectful young man. Yeah. I knew how to <laughs> pretend to be, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I would always sit behind the drummer at church during the worship time and just soak it in. And then after church, he would show me some cool stuff. A guy named Sam Smith was the guy that really kind of taught me. He was teaching me really cool stuff that I was like, I didn't realize was way more advanced, you know, like Mozambique grooves, oh, yeah. and like Steve Gadd stuff, Picaro kind of stuff. And I was like literally like four or five years old. That's crazy you to know? be exposed to that kind yeah. of stuff. And yeah. so I would, I would hang out at the church all afternoon in between services and just practice and practice and play and play and play. <laughs> Sunday night rolled around. Whenever I got older, I was able to play in the band at church and stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was just kind of nonstop playing. Which is great for me, terrible for the people that worked at the church. (laughs) (laughs) But thankfully, they put up with it. Yeah. Uh, So so your parents saw that in you, and you didn't necessarily have to go and get 
proper lessons right away because you were just immersed in this culture. Yeah, it was just all the time. I got one drum lesson from a lady in our hometown and I hated it. Didn't, didn't you're, connect. You're too young. Yeah, I was too young. Yeah. Yeah. And I had my own kid at that time. It was just always playing. I joined band, uh, like proper band in, in seventh grade. But I was also playing football. And that music was just, it came easy to me. Yeah. It wasn't something that I like worked too hard at, you know? Yeah. So sports was like really where I was focused on like extra time and things like that. So I quit band because I didn't want to march in my uniform, my football uniform. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And when we were playing, I was like kind of a cocky little kid, you know, and... I knew, I mean, I was already playing everything that we were supposed to be learning. And, I, yeah. you know, the band director didn't like that. And we just didn't really, we didn't jive, you know. So, so what, was, what like, was the football, your, your football career? Did, 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 you, did you get hurt or was it looking like, hey, I might do this? Or? So we, I played my whole life up until, oddly enough, my senior year of high school, I quit. But we like won state championship. We were the best, like high school football team in Arkansas, you know. Yeah. Incredible team, great coaches. Um and that really taught me how to show up and work really hard when you don't want to, you know, just yeah. before school, 5.30 a.m. in the weight room, like that kind of stuff, yeah. you know? So you just learn how to grind. You learn how to work, get over it, just like toughen up yeah. and, and show up, you know? And I feel like a lot of that stuff still, I, I, I have a lot of those traits still today that still connects with me today, which yeah. is cool. But yeah, so senior year of high school, I joined a different band that I was in. Fast forwarding, there's a bunch of other bands in between that. And um, we started touring the country. We would book shows via MySpace back when oh, yeah. MySpace was around. Was this the band The Exception? The Exception. Nice. Yes. So yeah, we just we busted out a um, an atlas and just said, okay, I've got family here, here, and here. Let's book shows around that so we can stay places for free. Smart. So we went to Denver. We went to like Cheyenne, Wyoming, Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Louis, like just kind of all around. Playing rock clubs. Playing rock clubs. Yeah. yeah like 16, 17 years old. With the dudes that you, you go to the bathroom and there's like a trough. Yeah. And everybody exactly. has to pee <laughs> yeah. in the, Remember those, Jim? <laughs> yes. You're like, hey. We weren't old enough to be in the clubs we were playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which was great. It was a great experience. Kind of learn how to tour with people at, a, at an early age. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we moved to Nashville together in 2006. That band did. And um, Mike Rennie, he's a bass player here in town. He was in that band. We yeah. still do sessions together all the time. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's really so cool. Maybe you guys were the only ones in the band that had either the aspirations or the skill set to potentially be session players. Yeah. There's another guy, Scott Hunley, was also in that band. He's doing sessions, mixing. He does a lot of mixing. Nice. He's a fantastic mixer. Did you guys have a band house together? We did. Yeah. Eighth Avenue, Eighth and Wedgwood. Eighth and Wedgwood by Zanies, right across the street from Zanies. Oh, uh, in the, in the back there behind the dry cleaner. Kind of, yeah. So if you were to turn, if you were to turn Douglas the left, corner. yeah, like on that side, Douglas yeah. Corner. There's like a pocket of three houses right over there. Yeah. We were one of those houses. It was like nine hundred bucks a month. Amazing for a three bedroom, three bathroom, full basement where we could practice. It was stupid cheap. I was like three hundred bucks a, a month. Piece. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if that. I remember a time where all Friday my morning. bills were like five hundred bucks. Yeah, I was like, "What? I could spend. I can spend that before breakfast now." <laughs> I know. And you know at what that I mean? time, that's a lot. You know, yeah. that time on a pair of drumsticks at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, I miss that old Douglas Corner. Douglas Corner. So many great acts have been signed there. So much great music oh has gosh, happened yeah. there. Zany's is a magical place too. I mean, any comic who is anyone is, is, has played that room. Yeah, huge. You know, saw Mark Marin there like yeah. a couple years oh, ago. It wasn't yeah, like that long ago. I just like you know, the food is good. The sweet potato fries, the, oh, the yeah. veggie burger. I, 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 I like. I, I'm overdue for his. Jim, let's do it. We got to. We're overdue for a Zany's hit. We totally need to do it. I had an ex-wife. She was a psychic, and she still uh -huh. does zanies occasionally. Oh, she was a psychic, not a sidekick. She, <laughs> the, the, was, si the was, sidekick, the subway sidekick is the foot-long cookie, hey. um, which does look good. But no, me and Billy Hahn. Billy Hahn was Colby Calais percussionist, and yeah. now he is... Brett Young's touring drummer. Awesome. And we had we had a little group called Strike That, where we would basically play household objects or office supplies, and we would make music. Out oh, of, cool! I know. thought it was I'd hit that. I thought that's what it was. No, called. I hit that is a Warts and All podcast that you have done. Yeah, yeah, with with, with yeah. Dave. Yeah. Dave, yeah, it's and cool. He has a and he has a he has a uh, a habit of setting up the interviews many time in the most 
loud, busy places like <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> sirens going by, other people Lawn talking. Mowers. The, yeah, yes. all, all the stuff. He's awesome. It, may, it does make it charming. So anyways, so you guys all come here and you're right there, 8th Avenue. We're right up in the middle of it. Yeah. Man. Yeah, all up in it. Yeah, and so I was going to MTSU at the time. With Lalo, right? Yeah, with Lalo yeah. And, and Julie, you know, teaching me. Yeah, to yeah. Your old, you know. Yeah, uh, little UNC Texas. connection. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. And uh, another teacher there, Tommy G, Tom G and Pietro is yes. his name. Life-changing teacher for me. He was like, he was my guy that yeah. I really connected with and, and worked with a bunch. Where's Tommy now? Because I used to run into Tommy all the time on the Tower Records yeah. on, on West, West End, End Avenue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's teaching now at UMass and Amherst. Okay. And uh, doing great things there with that program. Good for him. He's man. amazing. Yeah. We still talk like at least once a week. Say hey for me, please. I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah. yeah. So I went in, like I was saying, not a, not a lot of formal training for me, like not a great reader, but... A great ear, great feel, and could just kind of play anything, yeah. but just couldn't read that well. Yeah. Which you need to do when you're going to music school, yeah. shockingly. Um, so I went as a music production major and um, and then a music minor. And then after a semester, switched that around and just kind of busted my tail reading marimba, four mallet stuff, timpani, like all the, the classic stuff. All the stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then went from... And then, you know, switch majors, which was kind of like a jazz studies major yeah. with a minoring minor in recording engineering, which is great. You played in the big band at the yeah, MTSU? Yeah, big band. Yeah. yeah, like salsa band. Went from not being able to read to just like could read anything. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just spent so a lot that, of time. That on. leveled out the, your skill sets. So now you, now you had everything going yeah. for you. Practical stylistic knowledge, practical experience playing in a band, traveling with a band. Then you're in an academic environment and you're like, okay, I just need to get the reading together. You do Got it. it together, busted it. Yeah. yeah. And moved, I moved to Murfreesboro. I quit the band that I was in. We played one show at the end, you know, yes. right over there off, on Elliston. Cash the only. Yeah. <laughs> Beer only. <laughs> the sound guy there Beer was only. legendary. Legendary cat. Yeah. Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. yeah. His S10 truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bruce. He was awesome. I hope he's Curmudgy. still around. I hope he's still around. I think he might have passed away. Uh, I know. You know who would know? Adam Schoenfeld. He would know. He, he would, would know. He would know. He would know. Yeah, we played one show and with some great local bands, and I just thought to myself, we are not that good. <laughs> <laughs> we were great in our hometown. It's yeah. the classic story, you yeah. know? And uh, so I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to, I wanted to be a studio musician when I moved here. I just did, didn't know what that looked like yeah. or how you do that or what that is, you know what I mean? And so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go basically live in a practice room for as long as I can and keep networking, hanging out with folks in Nashville, try to try to like hang on some sessions or whatever, like just do that whole thing. And then started touring uh, shortly after that. Left MTSU in 2008. The fall of 2008 was my last semester there. Okay. Yeah. And then started touring with a guy named Griffin House. Then toured with a girl named Katie Herzig yeah. and just a bunch of other artists. And at that time started to work in some studio environments, you know, like working with a producer, Nielsen Hubbard over in East Nashville okay. and, you know, just building up those studio chops. And then it just kind of grew and grew and grew and, right. and took off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause you're, you, you say, I want to be a studio musician, but you don't know the pathway to do it. So there had to be a couple of experiences that were just like, Oh, this is, this is coming into focus. Yeah. I'm figuring this out. Yeah, know? absolutely. There's a drummer, Will Sales, who I met while I was in high school. He was playing with a guy named Derek Webb and, I was a fan of their music. They were kind of Wilco-ish, but mm. like a Christian band too, you know? So interesting. it was interesting. Really cool stuff. Um, I'd like to put, people are always asking me, do you play local, Rich? You got any other projects going? I'm like, I want to. I know. Yeah. I would love to put like an, an Americana type Wilco thing together. But you know what the most challenging thing is, is finding that fantastic charismatic front person yeah. that doesn't want to just be their own solo recording artist with invisible players right like a band concept yeah you think it would be easier to do it is not not easy no yeah 
Because if someone is great, they're probably already doing, you know, someone's found them. Right. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also tough for artists to, to keep musicians around in this town, too. You know, oh, yeah. younger, younger artists. Because yeah. if someone's really good, they're going to go get a touring gig or whatever, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, Will Sales was hugely influential to me and was kind of like a big brother mentor to me, even though he probably didn't think so. He's just like this annoying kid. It's just like awesome. asking me questions. Will Sales. That's Will Sales yeah. is amazing. Nice. Great, great drummer. Played with Matt Carney for a long time. Oh, killer, yeah. Tons of like session work. He, yeah, he's great. And so he would actually let me come and hang out with him on sessions. Nice. You know, and I, I wouldn't say anything. It would just be in the back. It wasn't, you know, wasn't annoying trying not to be like that annoying young kid yeah so he would teach me like this is how you tune drums for sessions for the studio because it's different you know live you're tuning more to the microphone than you are to your ear necessarily in the room you know and so i learned that at a pretty young age i was like 19 maybe 18 19 or whatever yeah. and um so yeah and then he he would kind of like help me out of like running tracks like learning how to build ableton sessions and things like that just cool stuff like recording at home and and so yeah he my first master session actually was with him it was a double drum session for an artist named aaron mccarley Two on universal drummers tracking at the same, same time, time. Oh, yeah wow so it was kind of like a jim keltner matt chamberlain type of vibe yeah you know um it was it was at house of david which i think is still there uh on Music Row. But yeah, so we would have, we had two kids set up in two different rooms. One was sort of the weird, bigger kick drum, kind of concert bass kick, yeah. like weird, funkier one, and then a more traditional kind of kit. Gotcha. And we would swap. That's awesome. Kids. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing. <laughs> I love that. So I was still in college at that time, I think. Um, and so, yeah, just like all these experiences started to add up and then the, you know, word kind of gets out about you and yeah. people go, hey, why don't we try... This guy out, which is really difficult for drummers. You know, I feel like it's one of the harder instruments to break into in the studio world because it's the most expensive thing to record. Yeah. You know? If the and if the drums aren't right, the whole thing just kind of doesn't work. And it's work. one of the toughest chairs because you know the expectation is all right, we're doing five songs in three hours and we got to get that drum take. Yeah. So it's the hot seat. And if the drums aren't right, then the bass isn't right, yep. or the guitar, or whatever. So you have to like re-record everything. Yeah. yeah. I always thought the drums were just easy. I mean, obviously getting into them and playing them, because that was just a natural, you know, draw to it. Yeah. yeah. But I guess uh, that's kind of interesting to hear that. You know, yeah, put it that is. Way. Yeah, like for a yeah. producer or an artist to whenever they go into record, they want to feel. I mean, you have to. You just have to have that ease and you want to know everything's going to be good that i don't even want to you shouldn't have to worry about the musicians that are there yeah you know yeah. that's just like your your comfort zone yeah you know the foundation but and every, it, it every rock band producer in the world is saying to themselves this is a band please let the drummer be good right because if he doesn't it gets awkward and then they have to bring in a guy to do behind the scenes stuff yeah so come I mean, in and so replace if, if you have a because the thing is you could tell can you tell if a guitar player is bad or a bass player? Yeah, for sure. Tone, I mean, tone and time. It's a regular ear. You know yeah, what I mean? but then like but if it's you a drummer, can, it's it's obvious, right? Yeah, and if you need to re-record the guitar, you really only need like one microphone, right? Or like maybe right, two, right, right, you right, know. Right. So you could go overdub that at your place or DI. But with drums, you need the room. You need yeah. like twelve to fifteen mics or whatever it may be. It's just a lot more expensive to yeah. fix. It's, um, an, it's an organism. Yeah, it's a it's quite the the operation. Have so. you guys heard of the movie uh, Dream Wild? <laughs> no, Ring a bell. It's with uh, oh gosh, um, Casey Affleck, uh, Walton Goggins is in it. Uh, Bo Bridges, uh, pretty big cast. But my cool. wife and I watched it last night, and it's a true story about these guys, these brothers named um, uh, Emerson. Is the last name Donnie Emerson? Yeah. Does that ring a bell? No, are Apparently, they drummers? That, no, they're uh, well. One the the brother <laughs> Walton Goggins character. <laughs> one of them was a, one of the brothers was a drummer. Gotcha. And they made like a self produced record back in the seventies. Oh, okay. And it like got discovered. These guys were out of Washington State. Yeah. And uh, somebody, you know, back in the birth of the internet, they had these you know chat groups and stuff like that. Uh, and they discovered their record that they put out in the late seventies. It then became relevant in like the late nineties, early millennium. 
And, you know, these guys just blew up. And the brother who wrote all the songs, the front man, started be taking it very seriously. But back then, his brother, who was on drums, was never that all that good. Uh-huh. And that was the tension throughout the entire movie. Gotcha. Was, you know, trying to, okay, you got to, you know, step it up here if they want to put us on a tour. I remember seeing the previews for that. I put that on my, my watch list. Did you? Yeah. It's insane the amount of content we have. Like, and it's, so it's like you put you have your favorites. I think Amazon Prime, and it's my watch list, or it's my stuff on Hulu, yeah. and it's just loaded with stuff. There's it's a it's lot. stressful. Yeah. It's giving me anxiety the <laughs> amount of things I have to watch for fun. Yeah, and then I just put on Sports Center, just call it a day, or, yeah. or like Thirty Rock, or something. I watched like a million times. Uh, is, that, is, is that your favorite? Uh, that or like Arrested Development or no, The Office, nice. like that era. Yeah, you know. So good. Arrested Development is just hilarious. It's man. so good. Yeah, it really is. It's still funny. We, it we, is. we we lost him. Oh my gosh! No, no, no. We lo- we don't know where he is. We lost. Him. Yeah, or he's gonna be all right. Yeah. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> no, he lost his left hand. He's gonna literally be all right now. <laughs> all right. Get it? Just dumb. Jim, you know, give us Leslie a good Nielsen. <laughs> hey, all right. Come on. Right there. <laughs> that is actually the same sample that they use on Sirius Radio XM, the 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 comedy station. Oh, really? Yeah, that that sample. That's, That's probably because they're using these uh, the Roadcaster too. Hey, yeah. come on, folks. Free plug. Yeah, we'll be nice. here all night. So, so what was the name of that artist and that album that was your first master? So that was Aaron mm-hmm. McCarley, and we were we did two cover songs. One was. Um, I, I can't even remember actually what the names of the songs were, which is crazy. I should remember that. And I don't think it ever came out. There's been many songs <laughs> since. Yeah. So, so that gives you the confidence. Hey, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I was you like, know. okay, this is cool. This is fun. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I can do this. Like signing a card, a yeah. union card. I'd never done that. Amazing. And didn't, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't really one of those stories of like, okay, I did that one time. Now the floodgates are open. It was still a grind. Slow you know, burn. Still, yeah. still like figuring it out and like, working on this record and doing another record and doing this and that led to that or whatever, yeah. you know, now you did a little bit of touring. So when you were like working with Katie or, or, or whatever, did, did, did you kind of have an epiphany? Like, Hey, this is cool. And this is always an option, but it's, it's like, I do not want to be on this bus right now. I wanna- yeah. Yeah. And that was kind of always my thought. I never wanted to, I always wanted to be in the studio. Like, I mean, everybody says that, but it's like, like for real, I really, I was drawn to it at an early age. I was recording myself in my bedroom when I was yeah. a kid, you know, like on a crappy little Tascam four channel tape recorder, you know? <laughs> yeah. And was just always enamored with that, like how to get drums to sound good to a microphone. And um, once I started to make a little bit of money touring, would buy some gear, buy, buy a couple of mics. I still have today, actually. Yeah. Um, and so the touring was sort of a means to get to meet more people to float myself like financially to be able to finally be able to turn down tours because I was booked in the studio. Did you ever to, have to go do the low Broadway thing? Did you ever do I that? I never did. You know, <laughs> I never did, cool. yeah. but I was, I did some odd jobs. Like I was a maintenance man at an apartment complex on oh, Charlotte. Pike. Like Mr. Far- <laughs> Mr. Like, Furley? Like straight up. Wow. Craigslist, like January, super slow touring schedule. Like, well, I got to make money somehow, you yeah. know, and I don't. Now, were you some, married at this time? No, I wasn't, okay. I wasn't married. Okay. Um, so my overhead was low, but, and I was valeting cars, you know, like doing that kind of stuff and like still and doing gigs around town, but just not enough to like fully, you know, yeah. make the bills happen. So yeah, a couple of weeks did that and then got another tour and said, peace out. Yeah. <laughs> now you said you moved here in 2006. That's interesting. Cause that would have been like. That would have been like maybe into Jason's like second or third single. And I was, I wonder why we hadn't crossed paths until just, you know, I know it's crazy. Another decade later. Right. We must have just been like, we were working the road. We were doing like 200 shows a year. Yeah. And I would come into town on Mondays and Tuesdays and do my, do my sessions. Yeah, exactly. It was a sexy time. I was about your age right now. Yeah. And that was just a very, very vibrant. I remember, you know, having my drums with Harry or whoever the heck I was with at the time. And yeah. you'd do it 10 o'clock at one place. Then you'd have a, another kid over for a two o'clock. It was, it was robust. Yeah. That's, you know, it's beautiful, man. And then it's you get so, on the bus and yeah, take the music Thursday to the people. Night, yeah. Peace out and come back Sunday. But you're state, you've stayed in town. And I mean, this is a great body of work here. Um, very, very robust discography. 
You got anybody Thank on you. here that you um, are just like, that is like, wow, that was, you know. Be- Steven Tyler was, was kind of a wow Steven moment. Steven Tyler Rico, yeah. Yeah, like I actually <laughs> recorded, so recorded some for him at my studio, at my own place, doing yeah. overdubs. And like having his vocals going oh, yeah. through your headphones is insane. Yeah. I mean, it's just like. You're an Aerosmith for like an hour, you know. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, it was it was insane. I mean, I remember taking like videos of it and sending it to my parents, being like, "Check this out." You was know? that it? was that his um, country solo yeah, record? Yeah, was the country record. And then yeah. Sarah, Sarah Tomek went to go do the tour. Yeah. I, now I got called originally when I um, actually before Sarah did that, um, I was playing with this band, Loving Mary, which is basically the Stevens background. Oh yeah, band. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I almost, but I, I was amazing. like, Look, I can't be in two places at once. So right. there's a reason for every season in. Like, like so Sarah phew, kill it. We got to get more female drummers on this show, Jim. There's some great ones. We, we really Chile. do. There's some great great. Yeah. I think people drummers. are going to look at the the, the 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 episodes and be like, "Where's all the chicks?" <laughs> no. You know, we, I mean, the, I mean the, the women drummers are slim pickings so. though. Well, you know? in this town we've got Sarah. We've yeah. got Megan Coleman. We've She's got awesome. um there's, there's right, a lot. So we yeah. got two. <laughs> we're just going. We're just going blank right now. What about like you yeah. know Evelyn Glennie and uh, oh, you know she's amazing. Sheila E and oh yeah yeah right. We'll, we'll, yeah. Have, to, we'll oh, have to zoom her. Cindy you know. Blackman. Yeah, yeah, Cindy Blackman. Incredible. Oh. She's around Incredible. here, right? Cindy Blackman. She's, she's I think about the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. There you go. She married Carlos. She gets to play the smooth drum fill like all the time. She married him. She is Miss Santana. Miss really, Carlos Santana. Good for her. I know. That drum fill cracks me up. I, I play it kind of as a joke all the time because it's so hooky. You're like you immediately know what song that is. Yeah. Just, just from the, from the drum fill. That's, but it's also the uh, the conga. Gun, yeah, the conga's gun, right? doubling it up. Yeah. yeah. Just like when you're like checking your drum sounds, I always do like a some version of being crack on gang crack gun. Yeah. Or totally, I'll, man. Or I'll do the jaded version, which was kind of inspired by that where you, where you make sure that you can test both toms. Being crack a gun gun boom crack. I tell the young kids, that like, look it, so when good. you got to get drum sounds live or in the studio, don't do a drum solo. Just play a pattern that incorporates the sounds of the kit. Yeah. So things can breathe and it, you can actually see how the kit's going to yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. Which is hard to do. These crazy you kids. Shed, you know, you know. Get a dead scat. Get a dead <laughs> Nobody does. Look what every, I can do. Look what I can do. <laughs> Nobody right. does. Everybody wants some. That's crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Well, yeah, jungle, 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 jungle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, incredible. So much fun. So Stephen Tal- oh, Stephen Tallarico was great, and um, Keith Urban. <laughs> that was awesome. Track, I mean, I tracked that at my studio as well. So, na- cool. so this is happening more often. So, so yeah. we'll just tell people you're in a suburb of Nashville, and you've got your man cave above the garage, yep. filled with great drums, great gear. Yeah, and you go up there with your cup of coffee in your skivvies. Yeah, and do the Jama thing. shorts, whatever. Yeah, and I tracked the Barbie movie, one of the songs from the Barbie movie. Which one? At my, it's uh, I'm it was up. called um, Push, the Matchbox Twenty song that Ryan yeah. Gosling did. Track that like before a session. 8 a.m. at the house. And I didn't know, I didn't really know the vibe of what the the scene was going to be or what the whole deal was. The producer just hit me up, like, I think maybe even the night before and said, hey, do you want to record on this song? It's for a movie. Yeah, absolutely. Is he a national producer? Yeah, national producer. Amazing. And um, sure, yeah, send me the files, go up, check it out. And I, it was Ryan Gosling singing. And in the movie, it's sort of a funny thing. It's like him kind of, he says, I'm going to sing at you, Barbie, you know? Oh, he's playing the guitar for Yeah, her. it's like on the beach. Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of, it's meant to be funny, but I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm just thinking like, God, this is terrible. <laughs> 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 like playing on a movie soundtrack. But and, it's Ryan Gosling. And I didn't know it was yeah. him, yeah. you know? I just thought it was like a demo session singer kind of yeah. making fun of that Rob Thomas kind of style, you know, like, because it was over the top and all that, you know? Yeah. And so did it and sent it off. And even the mix, Jim Cooley mixed it. And none of us really knew the 
the context of the song, which was meant to be funny. Yeah. But we didn't know that. And we were just kind of like, Jim what? Cooley. No, really? Yeah. So you remember now, Jim Cooley has become an award winning uh, mix engineer. He's Back like, off the mic just a tad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for about a decade, we worked together nonstop because when we had New Voice Entertainment, okay. me and the he guys, was the second engineer. He, he did it. He mixed a lot of the Thompson. He tracked right. the Thompson Square stuff, the Parmalee stuff. Yeah. So, dude, so Jim legendary. never leaves his man cave. Still He's never just, does. He's in there. I'm like, dude, that's how do you not go crazy? I don't know. Just locked up. He's got a special skill to be able to like stare at a screen for hours and hours and hours and a day. keep your ears fresh. I mean, I guess, right. I guess you have to maybe step out and you know how like when ginger is a palate cleanser in between yeah. soup, bites of sushi. I don't know yeah. what, what a mix engineer would do to kind of like just. It's just silence. I don't know, I guess. listen to some birds or something. I don't yeah, know. every once in a while, a we'll see him like pop out of his cave. And yeah. I mean, he listens pretty loud too sometimes. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like, and he's he's in, he's one of the best mix engineers I've ever yeah. worked with, heard. Now, you, heard. you dabble with that as well, right? Yeah, I also mix a little nice. bit. You know? And produce. And produce. And session lead. And session lead. Which is great. Yeah. The, the great thing about you must have a great ear because. Um, you know, when I get called a lead session, sometimes like I will get the charts done. Yeah. You know what I mean? But right. I am so slow at, yes. Yeah. You know, it's, you must be just really fast to be able to do that all the time. Yeah. I grew up actually guitar was my first instrument. There you go. So that's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Started on guitar. Well, it wasn't my first, it was the first <laughs> instrument I got. Drums were my first instrument, but I never didn't have a drum set till I was nine years old. Yeah. Um, got a guitar when I was really young and would just play along to the room. My dad, my dad kind of plays everything. Um, just like good enough, you know, to kind of get by. Yeah. He must be proud, right? Your folks. Oh yeah. They're super proud. Just like, look at this kid is done. He's doing it. It's amazing. <laughs> he, he bought a house. It's the yeah, American right. dream. Yeah, exactly. Playing Ra drums. Raising a family, playing the drums. It's crazy. Yeah. So he, he taught, he taught me like just basic guitar stuff when I was young, piano, um, my, he sings as well as my mom, my sisters all sing. One of my sisters plays guitar. Wow. So it's a real musical family. That's nice. Yeah. So it was just kind of the ear was always in there. Yeah. You know, now, now since, um, Evan, uh, session leads Jim, uh, his, his retirement, his, his pension from the union will be bigger than mine because he gets <laughs> double scale a lot. Because How do you get double scale? By session leading. He he takes on oh. the responsibility of getting together with the artist and or just, you know, being enter entertaining the rough demos. And then he does the number charts and he gets them all copied up and he passes them out with the coffee to all the players. And he just has to kind of make sure that everything is going smooth. So yeah. it's more responsibility. But, you know, like... I love it. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it, honestly. Yeah. And, like, I remember doing... You know, triple demos, like multiple days of triple demos with like Eric Legg over at Ocean Way. Yeah. And Factory. Yeah. And just tons of songs, which was, it was great. Yeah. Um, and sometimes like I would have to just write the chart out there. They would switch out the song. And so no guitar in hand, just like writing it out, just great. ear training kind of stuff, yeah. you know? Tommy Harden is really good at that too. Jim O'Reilly's really good at that. But usually it's a keyboard player or a guitar player because yeah, they just have more usual. of a harmonic. Right. Unless it's a Christmas song, I'm, I'm good. A lot of chords in those Christmas songs. <laughs> How many, uh, who's the guy on your sessions for Jason? Oh, that's Adam Schoenfeld. That's yeah, Adam's. Schoenfeld. Uh, Adam was telling me what his. Um, thing is and it's yeah it's not bad it's bigger yeah it's bigger <laughs> but drums are more fun let's be honest the drums is, it's the best chair so it's fun. the best seat in the house it really is yeah it's oh. the sweatiest seat in the house for sure what's, that, that your, what's your gear bro so i i don't have a kit endorsement i was talking to gretch for a while but pulled out of that yeah. um to but i play gretch i play gretch yeah. usually in the studio uh -huh. gretch or ludwig um and Zildjian cymbals, nice. Vic first sticks, Evans drum heads. You and I can never do a clinic tour together. <laughs> I know. We have, right. we have like nothing in common. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, you know, there should be it? a lot of banners. <laughs> <laughs> so many. So many banners. You guys remember the D drums? Yeah. yeah. They, they were, were great. Good drums. They tracked great. They were the, the sensitivity, the tracking. Yeah. And they weren't like. It was a it was a really nice feeling head, much more than the mesh head. Not the right. not the electric drums, the acoustic drums that they had. Oh, I do remember, remember them, those, but those weren't as good as the as the electronic drums that they had. I momentarily had cool. a kit of D drums. Yeah, and they were really nice. They rock. Yeah, they're they're great for like heavier rock, like metal yeah. stuff. Yeah. too. real punchy. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. They're yeah. great. Really long shells. Yeah. yeah. Nice kick drum shells. It's yep. beautiful. Very, yeah. very, very long. Very long. It's com- compensating. That's right. <laughs> like like when you pull up with your Porsche and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's someone always told me, they're like, hey, you can always um, check out and see like how a session player is like how well they're doing depending on like what they're driving. I know. So like when Ilya pulls up with his like Porsche the, yeah, um, grocery getter. Yeah. The thing is, if I'm, if I'm going to have a Porsche, I don't want it to be a grocery getter. I want it to be like a look, yeah, at, look like at a me. Yeah, a speed demon. Yeah. You know. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You ever drive one? Slow rocking the, the Porsche Denali. grocery getter. No, but you know, you know, I'm, I'm an Audi man. You made me an Audi man. Thanks. Well, you Jim. understand that Porsche is a high end Audi. It's like a step above, right? Yeah. What do you think? It's like the luxury version of an Audi. But an Audi is luxury enough. I mean, it's yeah. those know, are great. They're great. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Does I? Um, you know, for a high end Volkswagen, they're fantastic. But so, actually, <laughs> some people just don't want to put their money into cars. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like some people like are proud owners of Hondas. You've discovered that you're yeah. somewhat of a car guy. You, you got a taste. I did get a taste yeah. of it, but and right now I'm 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 back in the in the grocery getter. Yeah, but, you know. that's right. Yeah, I'm Acura MDX guy. Nice. And I'm just gonna drive. You know, it for a high end Honda, those anymore. are great cars. It is. Yeah. It's, not, it's the it's the luxury Honda. <laughs> it's a luxury Honda, and it will go for hundreds of thousands of miles. Yeah. So back to the drums, there's no reason for you to really take on an endorsement if you're not touring other than if you would like right. to, you know, uh, align yourself with the company f- culture and then you could, you know, probably get some more gear yeah. more often. Yeah, which is know? great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not opposed to it for yeah. sure. It just hasn't presented itself in a way that seemed like the right choice yeah. for me at the moment. Are you using a beefy stick? 5B, 5B, 5A. 5B. Yeah, 5B. Love. I get some people that are just like, how why the 5B? I'm like, well, the 5A is, is it is nice, but it's just not big enough. It's not enough. Yeah. Uh, and I like to, I mean, I don't hit super hard, Yeah. but if I want a bigger sound, I feel like the stick can get some of that for you. Yeah. You, you just know, turn without it around having, and use the butt. But that has this different sound. Yeah. It has a certain sound to it, which is cool sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah. And I mean, all you can see on my left because I usually rim shot like just all the time. Yes, the left stick is just frayed to like yeah. Yeah. no end. You know what I mean? And then so the I'll shank of the right like, stick, yeah, from the high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll kind of enter, you know, yeah. interchange yeah. them up. But yeah, five B, man, I love it. Now I love that, and 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 I know I've seen your the the cartridge rig. There's a lot of snare drums, and they all have personalities and characters, and you got to be able to pull things up really quickly, but. Am I right in saying that you could probably get through just about any situation in life with an Acrolyte, a Superphonic, and a Black Beauty? Yeah, Pretty you much. really could. Right? Yeah, even just a Black Beauty, really. I mean, I mean it yeah. can do a lot. Piccolo? And that was the first snare drum I bought. I don't have a piccolo, but I do. I want to call. I've been listening to. I listened to. Uh, we just had a Jason Hartless in here. So, it, oh, cool. He's Ted Nugent's drummer for the last nine years, and he just just has made Nashville home. So he just moved here. So, like, come on, let's let's have a conversation. We were just talking about um, when he had downtime with uh, T- Ted. He went out and played with a Sponge. So nice. my new thing is now that we have this Spotify thing that we pay ten dollars a month for all the music in the world. When 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 I'm reminded of a band, like someone's the other day was like Helmet. I was like Helmet. Oh, so then I went on like a Helmet deep dive. Yeah. So the other day I go on a Sponge deep dive. It's all Piccolo, right? It's yeah. all '90s. Nice. That was a thing. Yeah, that right? was the thing. That and was I, the sound. I'm just like I don't have one right now. So I want to maybe get one of those like. TW carbon fiber yeah. piccolos or something. They're just, cool. Just to have one. You know? And you can crank it up and kind of do the Steve Jordan thing yep. with those, you know, yeah. like it can be funky and cool Big too, time. you know. Yeah. You could do the Lars thing from uh, St. Anger. <laughs> yeah, just doing just the a trash off. can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, everybody, everybody makes fun of that sound on that album. It's, it's like, arguably the worst snare drum. No offense, Lars, if you're listening to this. Oh, yeah. dude, he gets so He's like, I don't care. He's I a am great not drummer. offended. I am laughing all the way to it's the, the bank. It's the worst snare drum sound yeah. I've ever heard yeah. in my life. He sure is. On yeah. a record. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, didn't stop him from selling millions of records, yeah. right? We're Metallica, <laughs> you're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's playing stadiums, I'm not. Yeah. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> right. Who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> we should be getting him on here soon, right? Yeah, if if they pass through, yeah, we'd have to go yeah. through so many layers of red tape. He's not on your uh, cell phone. Huh? No, I, I know his drum tech. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's a <laughs> that would be a cool convo. I would want to be a fly on that wall. Yeah, maybe we need to have a, a drum tech roundtable. That'd be really really fun. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. 
tell all, spill the beans kind of thing. Get them to start talking, liquor them up. You know? <laughs> Get them to sign in releases. Trouble. That whatever you say, there's no backsies. Yeah, <laughs> right. So you know, a black, so a black beauty. So like a kid, you know, uh, I tell the kids like, look at um, if you use a moon gel, a drum dot, a drum tack. The snare weights, the big fat snare drums, gaff tape in different patterns, um, mm -hmm. typing paper, uh, uh, just a wallet. Yeah. All you know, of it is going to make the drums sound completely different. Totally, yeah. so, and then, absolutely. You know, so yeah. I mean, I you could the Black Beauty was the first snare drum I bought based on Will Sales, the guy I was telling you about. I was like, hey, what snare drum should I get? That could be kind of a do it all type of thing. Yeah. Six and a half Black Beauty. Cool. Done. Still use it to this day. Love it. It sounds incredible. Isn't yeah. that kind of what I have upstairs? The black, it's a, a chrome over brass, right? Yeah. yeah. Black, black chrome over brass. Yeah. So I have the DW version of that. They're great. Did you, yeah. buy, did you buy that? I traded in uh, like a snare drum and a cymbal and it was an even exchange through uh, forks. Love it. Nice. And the drum was on sale and it is, hey, just do a swap. How about the three, We a city this size? We have three world class drum shops. It's incredible. Beautiful. It's amazing. It really is. Yeah, is it really I, that I'm a fan. Well, I it was for the, uh, for the longest of, of time. Know. I mean, for yeah. decades. Up until like, what, like the last five or six years, maybe? Yeah. yeah. You know? And now they have the reputations. Like, well, they're, they're all the great at what they do, but like, Forks is like, is more like new gear, you know, and they have a repair department and there is some used stuff. And then you go to Nelson and it's like, well, we go there for the, the espresso machine and, and all the vintage, the vintage stuff. stuff. And then yeah. you go to see Andy because he's got all the weirdest, rattly, shaky totally. things. And his snare drums that he makes are oh, incredible, man. Nice. They're, are, they're great. I want to treat myself to one. They're called uh, Hello. Hello Drum. Hello which Drums. Actually, I kind of helped name that. Did you? Because they used to be called Best Drum. Yeah. And uh, I have a couple of those. And whenever I hit one of them, I, I just said like, hello, that sounds like bleep, incredible. So what's, <laughs> what's, the, what's the one to get? Oh, if, man. If you get a hello snare drum. So the six and a half steel is great. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get it with the no flange hoops, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Like where it's kind of like a single flange, hoop, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like the straight up and down. Yeah. It sounds better oh, to me than the, the triple. Stick choppers. Yeah. Yeah. Like those. It sounds incredible, man. Uh, I used that snare drum on a bunch of Luke Bryan number ones, nice. actually, like that very one on yeah. a ton, ton of stuff. And so that would be the one that I would probably go to first. And then he also makes, uh, I've got one of his five and a half coppers. That's really cool. Yeah. So. I think that's the one our friend Larry Aberman was like, oh, I like this one. Oof. Plus you can get the wood root rims on them as well. Yeah. You right? can do the wood rim the thing, wood, yeah. which is great. Yeah. yeah. Andy's awesome. You got yacht. Remember? Yeah. A, -Yacht? A, -Yacht? Yeah. a yacht. Yes. They're great. And they're also, I had a snare drum from a company called Allegra. Love. But love them. I, I think they're still in business. I think they are. Barely. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, they are. But they're I, in niche. They're are they in like Vancouver? Or a, or I lost the drum in our. We had a, the Great Flood of 2010, mm -hmm. and I lost a gorgeous uh, sonar 18 inch floor tom, which goes uh, for like four thousand dollars. Yeah. What and about yeah. the kick drum you had? Did you have it turned into a coffee table or something? Yeah. Um, I I lost it so was like a 26 few inch, things. Like a 26 inch kick drum that you had. Red and black sparkle. No, it, it made it. It made it? it. And I sold that kit when I filmed drumming in the modern world dot com, which is already coming up on ten years. Oh wow! Ouch! Wow, that's yeah. that's um, awesome, man. Good for you. But but um, you know, it's just I, I you know I don't have kids. You guys that have kids, you have this instant legacy. I'm like, what can I do to be remembered? <laughs> I know. Right. Do 120 Dude, high I, definition drum. You videos. have a lot, a huge legacy. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. That's amazing. Uh, he, down, yeah. he downplays himself so I know. much. Well, it's, know? Good to be, it's better to be aw shucks than look at me. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But the Allegra stuff, was it a Mastercraft it, wood? Yeah, it was like, like sandy a, blonde with the wood rims. Those are killer. And, and I used it for the... Yeah, the kind of thing. Bir birthday But I mean, bat. in the studio, does anybody really tell? Oh, yeah. You can you, tell you can. more than anywhere else. I mean, if sure. you play... If you record a song with a CB700 kit and you just mic it and tune it the right way, can you really tell? It's just all about how it sounds. I think that would be you great know. for like a, to make a weird loops. Getting wood from the bottom of Lake Superior and then putting the, a kit together. Can you really tell? No, no. And you know, Lake Superior wood, <laughs> you know, 
charging fifteen thousand dollars for a four piece, that kind of thing. I mean, John Good gets these brilliant ideas. You I know. know. It's he, you know, it's a I'll take it. They're a for profit business, so you know, <laughs> right? They have well, to make gotta, money. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to you know innovate and try. Yeah, and it's try kind of stuff. a collector. Collector, but I, I, I would always say, I'm like, dude, you can put a pearl export kit on stage, mic it, and once it comes out the fronts, you're not going to tell. Yeah, you know? live is different than the studio because, yeah. like, in the studio, you are hearing every Microscope. single yeah. overtone, Nuances. and it has to be versatile. If they yeah. go, we like the toms, but it's kind of doing a boing thing, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, well, that's just in the drum because it's this crappy drum set. Yeah. So right. if you have a good drum set, you can change it and make it sound like anything. These are the only yeah. drums yeah. I have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These CB seven hundreds. You want this? You got to take that. I've actually right. got some old CB uh, hi hats that sound incredible. <laughs> <laughs> really trashy. They're right? real trashy. Yeah. Like, real well, the funny dark thing is, and trashy. They're cool at, for loops. You look stuff. at like Wuhan Chinas. Yeah. Those are great Chinas. They're great. And they're they're cheap. Yeah, it like doesn't have to be bucks. expensive to be no. good. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I well, have a Wuhan upstairs actually. Yeah, the, you know they're uh, they don't last very long. They crack, but they're awesome. I beat the crap out of mine. Now I watch remember, me watch my freaking crack it now. I remember that song by the out uh, the outfield. Jo- Josie's on a vacation, we're mm. far away, and I'm in my garage in my early teens and twirling my six, just waiting to sha sha on the ch- on the Wuhan. You <laughs> right, know? dude. Exactly. I could not wait. Getting after yeah. it. Coming up. Here oh, we go, dude. I love it. So hey, so I want to uh, might as well steal some info from you. Like you're, you, you do a lot of uh, great loops, something like say Keith Urban's, you know, wild hearts, super high fidelity loop. And then you've got like some other kind of strange, trashy lo-fi stuff. Mm-hmm. What, you know, Greg uses the Akai MPC thing. Some guys have just got the, a physical machine. Other guys have got the machine app on their yeah. iPad. What's your go-to? Well, I've got right now, I kind of just switched it up. So I've got a hybrid of a bunch of a couple different things. I usually, whenever I'm traveling or whenever I'm my go-to that comes with me all the time and that goes with me all the time is uh, the machine, the micro machine, the little guy. Yeah. Cause you can just set it up wherever and it doesn't take up a bunch of space. <laughs> and I've got a bunch of samples and stuff in my laptop that nice. I can drag and drop and pull into that and build something. Um, and then I also, in my cartridge rig, I've got kind of a, almost like another recording setup, you know, where I've got an interface, I'll set up a couple of microphones, record myself into Ableton live, yeah. chop that up, do some effects and then send that out the same loop lines that the machine's going out of. Oh, so you, you know? just, you just tell the guys, Hey, shh, I got it. Not- yeah. Let me just record this real quick yeah. and then I'll edit it and then throw some effects like- on it. And it takes like 10 seconds. Yeah. Which that's is awesome. Yeah. Cause you know, Ableton super fast. And then I've also got um, the SPDS X pro, over to my left. Okay. So uh, I'm kind of going in this hybrid thing. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts, but uh, triggers on kick and snare, which is awesome. And then I've also, those are going to their own outputs from the, from the pad triggering my own samples or other samples that I've got, you know, and then I'll use the pad as well to, to play loose. So I've got a kick drum trigger, pedal. Uh, like external trigger pedal. Yeah. So I'll, I'll play loops on the pad into Ableton, chop it up, send it out, or I'll just play it live, you know, yeah. so I, cause you can switch over, play it left. And then here comes the chorus fill. And now the feet are back on hi hat and kick drum. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so kind of, so three it, options. So there's a lot of options. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And then whenever I'm tracking at home, I usually just, a lot of times I'll just drag and drop in samples if I'm building a loop or I'll just play it on my kit and then kind of affect it more, spend some more time with yeah. some things at the house. Yeah. You know? I love it. Okay. So I got to get faster at Ableton. So this is always, you know, you don't want moss growing on you. You got to, you got to, I know it's all about workflow. And so what I tell people is just spend that, like I would practice this kind of stuff at my own studio when I'm on my own. So you're fast. Yeah. So like whenever I get to the studio session, they're not sitting around waiting on me. And it's more like, all right, we're creative. We want to be in the moment. Let's go. Yep. Cool. And and so sometimes actually while we're listening to the song, I'll leave a little bit early. If I kind of get the gist of the song, I'll leave around chorus two or bridge. Start building. Go into the room, start building something. Yeah. So by the time everybody's sitting down and tuning and got their thing, I'm ready to go. We printed the loop. We're ready to rock. You're thinking, yeah. you're thinking an efficiency. Yeah, yeah. efficiency. That's good. And so, because even on a master recording, like it's a luxury to have, like, say, one song every three hours, right? I yeah, would think that's that on a, a master recording, it's more like every 90 minutes. 
two songs a session kind of a yeah, thing? Yeah, it's usually two songs a session. Some guys still do one song a session, which is great. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's three songs a session. Yeah, one hour, is, baby. That's <laughs> moving. That's moving quick. That's usually if they're going to do overdubs later with yeah. guitar overdubs and things. But yeah, two songs a session is a good pace. I like that. It's pretty much the Al, that's the Aldine pace. Yeah. We yeah. do one song every 90 minutes, so it's a it's a four-song day. Yeah. Um, so we record 15 tracks for the record, so really we're done in about three days. That's great. You know, and then... Yeah. It's a lot of music. Adam comes in, does the does the guitar overdubs. I might come back on another day and do shaker tambourines or whatever kind of what a funky stuff we got to do there, and then Jason sings at, at his own pace. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, man. Keeper tracks. Yeah, and in Nashville, I mean, that's so... That doesn't really happen in other cities. No. Which we don't... We we kind of forget in Nashville how quick and efficient we are in the studio and just yeah. like on it, you yeah. know, in the engineers too, like <laughs> across the board, not just the musicians, but it's the engineers, the assistant engineers, it's everybody like the gear works, <laughs> you know, like yeah. all that's been tested out. Mics are tested out before we get there yeah. so that we can just go. <clears throat> and the punching, like the engineers that like, you know, working with cam the other day over yeah, at sound stage. So fast. I get you. I got you. I got you in. I'm going to get you out. Boom, boom. Rich, you going all the way down to the top. Yeah. I'm going down with Adam again. We're gonna... like, Let's go. Dude, I know. He's built different. Yeah. He is, he's built different, man. I mean, yeah. He can hear five different people talking at one time encode it all internalize it while he's doing other stuff yeah you know it's it's wild i'm relatively patient like from being an educator but like if if i got five people talking at me I'm like whoa yeah same. you know that's how i would be like, yeah, yeah one at a time please yeah <laughs> yeah so what about the stuff that you're uh producing you're you looking for talent all the time uh, yeah scouting are you, are you looking at tiktok you're just out on the town watching showcases where do you where are you finding these so folks that you want to work with for me producing usually comes from writing so whenever i'm writing with an artist and i'm working on the demo if they like the demo they go hey let's do a record together or we'll write some more or whatever nice. so a lot of the a lot of the production stuff i've done has stemmed from just writing with people and so it's a natural progression. I'm producing a record right now for an artist that's actually in Egypt and they just hit me up like online yeah. and it's really cool. So we wrote the whole record together. A lot of doom back in there, huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Cause it's like more of a pop record. Yeah. The artist is from California, but has lived in Egypt for a little while. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we wrote the record remotely. I would send her tracks and stuff and she would write and sing on her phone, melodies and lyrics, send me her vocals. I would chop that up and arrange it all, you know, and then she flew here and we did the record last week. It's so cool. It's amazing. Yeah. It's now, so do cool. you have your, like your, uh, your contracts? Like here's my production contract. Boom. Yeah. You know, just yeah. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Get yeah. We, we usually talk, I like to talk about that stuff beforehand just so it's not, so everybody's expectations are set, yeah. you know, so, you Smart. know, you know what you're getting into, you know, yeah. everybody knows what's up and um, yeah. So do all that. And I, re I enjoy producing. It's just a, it's a totally different hat to wear. Cause you know, in the session world, when you're done when that, in that three, six hour, nine hour block, you're done, yeah. you know, you go home and you don't see those sessions ever again. When you're producing, it's like, so I'm, I'm like cutting vocals, editing vocals, tuning vocals, doing harmonies with the artist. I might sing some as well, playing extra synth parts, guitar parts. Incredible, man. Yeah. So it's kind of like Renaissance, man. Building it all, you know, <laughs> and then, yeah. And, and I enjoy it. It's just a different creative outlet for me, yeah. you know, and, uh, well, you're still so young and around. you're already sure. doing a lot. Yeah. You're just no. like, yeah, do, do it again. <laughs> Do it better. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, you're in, you're not even 40 years old. So like, this is a town where like you can just keep working on this, keep growing and adding these skill sets. And I can't imagine where you're going to be at like 55 years old. I mean, you'd probably be winning Grammys. That would be, that would be awesome. Yeah. That's the, that's the goal. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so I, I just enjoy it. You know, if I was doing the same thing every day, I'd probably get bored. Yeah. Even tracking, like if I was to track at home every day, I'd probably get bored with it. Yeah. And if I wasn't tracking at home at all, I would be like, man, I want to, I want to do that. Yeah. You know? So it's nice to mix it up. And we record the stagnant. same, if you know what I mean, we're, rec yeah, I know we're recording the same song. It's like over the same and over. six or seven songs. songs. Yeah. Is it a six, eight? Is, is it the cute little thing with the bar four and the bar two? Right. That right. Thing, or, bar, you know, the bar three and the bar two, they kind of go back and forth with each other. Yeah. Is it the, 
Definitely the, not a shuffle because we're not doing shuffles anymore. That's rare. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, is it the, is it the trap out that seventy five yeah, beats per minute? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that pattern. Probably, a, probably a hundred thousand times. Hundred thousand times. Yeah. Can humans actually pull that off? Oh yeah. Really? What you the can't trap? pat stuff? No. Yeah. If you got the SPDS right next to you. <laughs> ah, okay. You could do your little five stroke rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Man. Um, yeah. Jim, what comes to mind for you? What do you want to know from this? This young man is on fire. I mean, he's like, you know, winning the awards. He's doing the thing. He's booked. What, what's what's the schedule? I mean, do you get into like scheduling conference? Like, oh, no, I'm with Dan Huff this week. And then like, can you wait till the end of the month? It's so crazy. It's exactly what I was going to ask you. Sorry, Jim. Thanks. Thanks for While I asked you, I thought of something that I just wanted to check. It happens. It happens. Scheduling, I think, is (laughs) one of the more difficult aspects to juggle in what what I do. Like, because sometimes, you know, you'll be booked out for however long with somebody and then you get a master session or something that might, it's, you know, that might just pay more, you yeah. know, and you kind of, ha- there's back end money with those things too, that you have to like consider. And so, so for me, yeah, it's just juggling personalities. Who can I smooth this over? Can we look at maybe another date or if not, I'm so sorry, but I can help you find somebody else yeah. that will do a great job. You know, so if you get hired for a custom recording for some guy, you know, Joe from Montana that comes in and he, he's got a whole day booked. Yeah. And then, and then Dan Huff calls. Yeah. You he, have to he, do the Dan Huff thing. You you try to send somebody else. For yeah, the other thing. yeah. Yeah. And, and everybody gets it. Like the people that do this a lot, totally understand. Yep. It's only the people that aren't really in the business or, or aren't necessarily, and this sounds bad, yeah. but like doing it at a high level, you understand. And you've had to do that same thing. Like, Hey man, something else comes up. People bail on me. Like if I'm producing something, like that just happened recently. Hey, so sorry. Had a day of masters come up. Yeah. Can't do it. No worries. Totally get it. Totally. All good. We'll find somebody else. Yeah. There's so many great musicians in this town. You know, you're, you're going to be, they're going to be okay. Yeah. I, I thought, hear it's a music yeah. town. Yeah. 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 Big music town. Well, somebody amazing will be available to come in and help I out. I mean, and, the pool is deep, man. It's hey deep. guys, I'm all, I'm always available. If you want something to sound bad, <laughs> let me know. Jim, no, Jim's got a nice natural feel. Yeah, let's go. Come well, on. Jim, I cut you off. I'm so sorry, buddy. What what were you thinking about? I was going back. I took a note on uh, you have like, you noticed that the guy Bruce drove an S10. Are you yeah. one of those guys who memorizes the cars that people drive? I can't, I've never thought about that, but I, I kind of do the I same am. thing. <laughs> yeah. You see the I don't car? know why. Do you do the same thing, Rich? I mean, when you. I have a weird thing. I memorize <clears throat> people's email addresses. It's really? Bizarre. Yeah. Man, yeah. You're like uh, drum slayer at AOL. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I've done, if it's if it's unique and just odd, then yeah. it's hard to forget. But yeah. yeah, I feel like sometimes with, it's like musicians, they play a lot of times like their personality, you yeah. know? Yeah. And a lot of times someone's car is kind of like their personality a little bit too. And so it just, whenever yeah. that's really connected and it goes together really well, it sticks in my brain. Yeah. You see, when you pull up to a session, you see a Beamer there, you're kind of like, oh man. Yeah. Oh crap! There's a beamer here. <laughs> and how they, they are? They must be leading the session. Jim's more of a, <laughs> yes, Jim's more of a Mercedes guy. Yeah, only because. But I was never. I never thought I'd be a Mercedes guy. I, I sold cars once upon a time, uh-huh. and uh, I first started selling Honda, which made sense because we drove a Honda Odyssey for the family. It was our, yeah. you know, the the the, the uh, family truckster, and uh, I had a customer tell me that you need to be selling Highline. And at the time, uh, the company that I worked for had uh, Porsche, Audi, um, BMW, Mercedes. Mercedes had an opening. I put in for a transfer. I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. I never knew I would fall head over heels for a German vehicle. I know, right? Crazy. They're meant to go fast. But uh, no, Mercedes is comfy. Yeah. That's comfortable. You, you're you're going to be comfortable in it. For BMWs, you feel it in the steering wheel. You feel it in the, uh, right. in, the in the seat. Yeah. And Thomas Lang and I, we kind of went head to head with our conversation. About the, about the cars. Yeah. yeah. Really? He's, he's a Beamer guy, and I'm, I was a Mercedes. There you go. And I told him, I said, you know what BMW backwards stands for? He goes, no. I said, wants Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and he started dying. Give us a bit up. Come on. Hey, come how on. often are you changing heads, bud? <clears throat> Just whenever they start to sound bad. Yeah. Um, 
How is like Greg Morrow? Is like he's like I like to keep those toms. Dude, they've on. been on forever, <laughs> like for decades, and they still sound great, man. It's a thing. It's weird. It's the smooth whites that he uses. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, it's maybe once. A, it just depends. Like on my cartage kit, probably once a month. You know, um, snare drums more often more for often. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could just hear it. Like whenever I can't tune it how I want to, or if it starts to sound a little too slappy yeah. sounding, then it's like, gotta go. Do you, you use lug locks for your rim shots? I do. Yeah. On yeah. the snare drum. Lifesaver. Yeah. The Tama makes some that are incredible. Yeah. Uh, thrills. Yeah. They're like black and red and they're kind of like diamond shaped. Oh, huh. they work the best of anything that I've ever used. Like, Tama. They, yeah, well, they're, they're awesome. Speaking of uh drum kit, endorsements are they going to be i mean who here endorses tama Tama's not too much of a country lonnie wilson lonnie he's, wilson. A, he's a tama guy mm -hmm. um they're a great sure drum kit, others man. they're great yeah they're incredible yeah and like peter erskine is a tama tama yeah. guy i always say tom yeah i don't know how tama to tama potato pasty pasty yeah exactly <laughs> but they they've kind of come into a different market recently yeah, to where it's like not just rock stuff because they've kind of been more known as like rock metal rock stuff. And right. metal, yeah. yeah but they're they're making like great kits that sound a little bit more vintagey or kind yeah. of tuned more open uh ronnie caspi is another drummer so i did this zildjian event last year last fall up in boston yeah yeah honoring eddie bayers they're doing their it was their 400th year anniversary of being a company zildjian zildjian yeah crazy 1623 like wow. oldest music company in the world. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and they were also inducting some of their drummers into their hall of fame. Eddie Bayers was one of those. Yeah. So they hit me up and said, Hey, can, can you come up and play in honor of Eddie? You yeah. know, absolutely. Of course. Big time. So there was some, like, it was just a, a ton of incredible drummers. I was just like, why am I here? You know, like, what am I doing? I'm like going up to Antonio Sanchez going like, you are a God. Like, yeah. I love what you do. Birdman. Yeah. Yeah. Birdman, which like talking about music bed stuff earlier, oh, yeah. I got that idea to do an all drum kind of cinematic project from him like based so, on the so, Birdman. So musicbed.com has been piquing my interest. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's license music. You can license, but instead of like full songs for films, it's more of like the bed. Yeah. No, no, no lyrics. Well, there, there are some uh, on there. Yeah. Production like, there's a bunch. Yeah. yeah. So they have everything, anything that you would ever want, like musically, like if you were wanting to put it in a commercial or a film or a video for a wedding or whatever, you know, you can find that on there. And yeah. So I had the idea to do just drums. Uh, cause I had seen, you know, Birdman, obviously that movie, Antonio Sanchez scored all the music for it. And most of it is just drums. And it's like some at a time kind of free jazz ish stuff, which has really piqued my interest just cause it's so different than anything that I do, Yeah, you know? And then I, I would watch like a, some commercials I would see that were just drums and I'm going, okay, this is a, I've never noticed that, but this is a thing. So reached out to them and they were interested in it and did a project for them and it did really well. And I mean, there are companies in Paris, France, like clothing companies that will use my drum songs, you know, drum songs, yeah. like for their ads and stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, super so cool. Did, did you have to call them to do the project or is it, is it a thing where like basically you, you sign up an account and you load your stuff up and you throw your hat in the ring, right? Anybody can do it. Um, not anybody can do it. They gotcha. kind of have to approve okay. the idea. Nice. And so I had some, I had produced some things, produced some records with artists that had a relationship with that company. And so I was already involved in the company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that I guess kind of helped with the, the relationship was already there. And I just had the idea and said, Hey, would you guys be interested in this? And, and they were, That's and killer. yeah, so I've done like four or five different projects now with That's them. Nice. And it's great. Cause I can, I can do it for my place and yeah. I mix everything and do it all myself. Great. I kind of use that Birdman thing as an inspiration because, uh, uh, this actor, Larry Romano reached out to me last year and he was on this uh, show called King of Queens. Yeah. And he, but he's also a film director and he has a movie coming out. It's going to hit the festival circuit called Saturday in the park. And he goes, 
I want this score to be almost all drawn. That's awesome. So, yeah. we, you know, so we went over to, uh, to Tony Mora's house and, you know, cause yeah. Tony has way more outboard gear than I do. He's got, and, yeah. and it's nice to work with another drummer. Right. You know, cause we can get each other inside each other's head. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so, so hopefully that'll see the light of day. That's so cool, man. A lot of drums. It's such a different way to create than what we normally do. Cause you're kind of, you have to think a little bit more like, you're like punching certain spots, you know, yeah. like you're not necessarily playing a form of a song. I mean, you kind of are, but yeah. it's just like a different style of a song. Yeah. And so I would think like sometimes, I, honestly, like I would throw up movies from YouTube and have it with no sound and then play to the movie. That's smart. So it would like kind of create certain hits or certain peaks, peaks and valleys, and valleys and yeah. emotion on the drums, you know? And I did a lot of that stuff with Tommy G at MTSU. Like he would go, I want you to play like clouds. Hmm. And I'm like, that's cool. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> right. A lot of cymbal swells maybe. Yeah. Or like mallets yeah. on the toms, swells are just like a certain thing. He's like, okay, now I want you to play like fire or I want you to play like rocks or yeah. I want you to play like you're mad or you're sad that's or whatever, great. you know, evoking a certain emotion. Cause that's what music is, is like, conveying emotion through your instrument and you know, you want to, you know, have somebody react to that. We're know. not just playing patterns and then the occasional Motown fill. Right. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> I mean, yes. If you want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the money. Uh, so, and then you have some samples that you got. Yeah. Out there so too? I, I just did a sample pack a couple months ago and you can get it at my website, Evan Hutchings.com. Nice. Yeah. And I made that for writers and producers that, want just good sounding drums to play to, yeah. you know, there's samples, like there's one shots in there of like just kicks, snares, toms, like with a tight mix and with a roomy mix, yeah. you know, and then grooves at all different tempos, dry mix where it's real tight. And then a big rock kind of roomy thing and fills and swells. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole, the whole shebang. Smart. It was fun. Yeah. It was a blast to make, man. I, I'm actually working on another one right now. It's, that's great. It's really cool. It's I got fun. I got a couple of packages with Yurt Rock. I don't know. Yeah, those guys are awesome. That's a great company, man. They're that's they're perfect. like the biggest. My you friend know. Ryan, he spends a lot of money on advertising, and he gets the word out. Yeah, you see it all yeah. all the time. But practical. I'm always thinking practical because there's so yeah. many so many loop packages and things out there that are just they're they're almost too smart and almost unusable. Yeah, like exactly. let, let's do some knucklehead things that somebody that wants to play a three chord country song to can just immediately pull up. Absolutely. You Sounds know? great, feels great, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. And so and then ultimately too, like I'll be on sessions where the demo was made with the drums from my sample pack. You yeah, know? I love it. And they're like, well, you can just go grab some coffee if you want. Or yeah, that sounds like, good. Yeah, we record it. You know, amazing. But it's cool. You yeah. know, it's cool. It's kind of connecting with people. And yeah, it's the same thing like what you're talking about. It's not overly processed. So many sample packs are like the guys were just bored. It sounds like, you know, and just yeah. like throwing every plug in on here and like, we're going to blow this up and like throw all this, which is fun to do. Right. Mm. But then in like a practical setting for what, we see in this area code that's not really usable. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like scrolling through a Roland electronic drum kit. Yeah, the TD kits, and like ninety percent of the sounds on there are completely unusable. Right, they're like fun what? to play for a minute. Right, but then if you want to like actually use them, practical, you're gonna go well, with the classic. Well, maple like, what, kit. Were you, what are you guys <laughs> thinking with this? Yeah. You know, this. You know, I guess that could, that could be used. That was a bad example. That was, you know, that was great. Jim. You know, like right. sample that. Yeah. Something like that could, you know, hey, let's just throw it in. Just, you know, give them as many as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. It's fun at Guitar Center. <laughs> that was me when I was a kid, man. Is on that I know. electric kids on yep. Saturdays. On Saturday like, morning. I want to <laughs> hit, hit stadium <laughs> setting. God. Yeah. yeah. Play along with Toto. That's very inspiring. Know? So are you, are you, are you, are, what are you, who are your favorite drummers coming up? Is Jeff's in there, right? Oh God. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's like the recording goat, you know, for just holding it down and he died tragic like one year older than you yeah with that entire body of work it's nuts man crazy no was he 30 he wasn't even 38 38 yeah. really yeah it's so crazy yeah it's crazy so yeah him jim keltner early on was like a big influence matt chamberlain nice um a lot of a lot of jazz guy like Stanton Moore was a big influence on me early yeah, on. Beautiful. Took some lessons with him. Yeah, whenever you know he'd be here doing clinics and then good do, teacher, great teacher. Yeah. yeah, like that. That 
I, I had a little like um, New Orleans second line band in, in my hometown and we would play at this Cajun restaurant like every Thursday night. That's cool. It was super cool. So it was like just kick drum, snare, cowbell, ride, and a hi hat. That yeah. was it. And so just, and I was like all over the Stanton Moore stuff, like had his book and was just like eating it up, you yeah. know? So I'd just go there and just kind of like practice all that stuff. Stickings. <laughs> it, it, it's all stickings. It just yeah. comes down to a sticking. It really is, yeah. man. It's really basic. It's not anything crazy. It's yeah. just, and then what you do with that, you know, is what makes it music. But um, yeah, Matt Chamberlain, he was a big influence on me early on, just kind of looking up online, what's he using? Because I lo always loved the sounds of his drums on records, like yeah. Fiona Apple stuff or, you know, the Wallflowers. Nice. All I mean, and then, you know, spanning that from like Kanye West and like all these, the, the, his discography is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm confusing him with the drummer from Pearl Jam. That's right. Matt Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Also a great drummer. Yep. And there's also Amazing. Jimmy Chamberlain too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jimmy Chamberlain. Matt, yeah. Matt's a big risk taker, real out of the box thinker, and a man of few words. He, lets he the, is. The yeah. drums do the talking. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And he kind of, he was always, it seemed like he was always recording himself too, which was interesting to me. Yeah. So I would say, okay, well, like what mics is he using? What's, and I mean, he couldn't buy any of that stuff, but I would just at least see it, yeah. you know, and go, okay, maybe that sounds like this or that. This is before YouTube, obviously. Right. You so, know, you know, I'm glad to see getting their due a little bit lately, at least on social media, is Brooks Wackerman. Yeah. He's amazing. Incredible. He's well, the, really good. The whole Wackerman family, they're all crazy good drummers. Yeah. Um, family he, business. He just needed to get that job. That's yeah. a big job. And, and put him, it's like here, it's a big platform for yeah. him. Yeah. You know? Avenge Sevenfold. Yeah. 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 Incredible. Is there any like uh, sleepers in there where you're like, oh, I wouldn't think that would be an influence, like some weird rock metal dude or something? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good question. Well, I grew up on, well, Christian music. I wasn't really allowed to listen to anything non Christian when I was a For kid. For a while? Yeah. Wow. Until I discovered Led Zeppelin. So there's like a lot of Sonic Flood, DC Talk, yeah, that kind of DC stuff. DC Talk. Yeah. It was like my first concert ever was DC Talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grew up hearing Chris McHugh, Chad Cromwell, Dan Needham, Scott Williamson, you know, Steve Brewster. And I, I didn't know it, you know, I, I would look at the credits, but I didn't know who those guys really were. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's just all in there. It's all in me, you know, it, just ingrained in there. Um, so Scott's, whenever, whenever I work with Slos, it's just like yeah. two peas in a pod. Cause you've Scott's been listening son, to been listening, Or like Mark Hill. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Been listening to his bass playing since I could walk, sure. you know, <laughs> yeah. Scott's son works for us here. Oh really? That's yeah. cool. Yeah. He's a video producer. That's awesome. He's made a nice, he made a couple of nice videos for me. Great kid. Yeah. yeah it's cool. So the movie, that thing you do, that's what made me really want to get a drum set. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you this up. yeah. Kenny. Yeah. So after I saw that movie, I'm like, okay, I want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want to do. My parents were like, all right, you got to clean out the garage and then we'll get you a kid. So did yep. it. And they did. Nice. What was yeah. your first kid? <laughs> it was on, it was actually a knockoff of a Pearl export. It was just an expo. <laughs> by Pierrel. By yeah, yeah. Pierrel. Oh yeah. my god. By -E -E I don't even know who made it. I mean, it was just. Yeah. I mean, it was like yeah, just probably like two hundred to three hundred bucks, and yeah. the kit sounded amazing. Like what we were talking about. Did you hold on to it? You still got it? I yeah, I saw nice. my folks' place. The tom, the the kick, and the tom sounded incredible. Yeah. Threw some new heads on it, and I mean, I could you could record with it, you know, like a certain sound. You know, I had all my favorite band stickers on the front and yes. stuff. Toured with that, toured with that kid a bunch. But um, was it brand new when you got it? It was. It was brand uh, new. Had a red bow on the front. Yeah. And uh, I annoyed the crap out of my sisters I with had, that kit. I had dictionaries, <laughs> dictionaries and encyclopedias for my first drum kit on a bed. Yeah. Nice. That was it. Yeah. Hey, that'll work, man. That worked for Dave Grohl. That's right. You learned how to, how to play on pillows. I learned how to play. I will say Tiffany Dave Grohl is probably, he's, he's my right. number one. Yeah. Influence wise right now, at least. You yeah. Know? I'm, I'm, I'm he's rocking not, the Foo Fighters. He's shit. not underrated though. Like if you <clears throat> have to pick not. out who is an underrated drummer right now and you're like, who comes to mind right now? Uh, Ronnie Caspi, the drummer I was just talking about. She's from, it's a girl. She's from Israel and a monster Monster drummer. Ronnie Caspi. Yeah. Ronnie Caspi. R O N I K A S P I. Check so her out. She's got her own stuff. She's got really? her own records. 
she plays with Avi Shai Cohen, an Israeli jazz guy. Yeah. Trio. And she went to Berkeley, like just a couple of years ago, left Berkeley and is like now like she played at the Zildjian event. That's how I met her. I, I didn't yeah. I didn't know of her before that. And we're all like me and Aaron Spears and Adam Deitch and all these guys hanging backstage. And you could see at rehearsal, there was a TV, you know, broadcasting what was going on on the stage. And when she started playing, everybody shut up and was like, good God. Wow, really? like, it's because her in, she has interesting choices. <clears throat> interesting phrases. choices. Like her chops, her energy, just like ferocious on yeah. the kit. I mean, she sits up, she's tiny. She's probably like five, one, you know, yeah. and like a hundred pounds. Hair's like pink, you know, yeah. like. Wow. And she gets on the kit and she sits up super high and just demolishes the drums. Wow. <laughs> I'll have to check her out. It was about, amazing. Uh, yeah, check her out. Annika Nillis. Annika yeah. Niles. Ms. Niles. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. She's incredible. She's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Future yeah. drummer. What about Maytal Cohen? You know, Maytal. I haven't heard from her in a while. I know. She kind of yeah. like started a family. Yeah. But she was playing, uh, you know, like metal covers and stuff like that. Okay. And, you know, she, wearing, she got a lot of eyes yeah. for a long time. Pretty much. Yeah. For a reason. She yeah. was wearing like lingerie while she was playing. Yeah, that, that is a trick yeah. that the girls use sometimes. I, you don't uh, want to see me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it I once. I can't pull work. that off. Yeah, people weren't fans. That's funny. Get but, off the drums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put on a shirt. <laughs> but yeah, she she's kind of on like the radar for me of like, I'll like just look her up on YouTube and yeah. she'll blow your mind yeah. like yeah. instantly. Yeah. Whatever she's doing. It's amazing. Was there a jazz phase when you were at MTSU with the, yeah, the that's yeah. all I did really when I was at MTSU yeah. it was like, I was just a jazz snob kind of guy. <laughs> like, like studying the big band drummers, big and band drummers. The, yeah. I mean, everything like going all the way back, you know, like to the early dudes yeah. you know, and then modern guys as well. Brian blade was a huge influence on me. Uh -huh. Like so much so that I was like trying, I was like subconsciously looking like him when I was playing and kind of moving like him because yeah. he's really animated when he plays. And Tommy G, my teacher at the time, was like, dude, you gotta take a break. You from gotta that. stop that. No more Brian Blade for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no okay. more Brian Blade. It's affecting your playing well, yeah. and then not a good way. You yeah. Know? yeah. Top topical things as at the moment. Um, the Alex Van Halen uh, auction, did you pick up anything? Did I you didn't. Bid on anything? I didn't. No. no. Have your eye on anything? I didn't even know what was going on. Oh, really? Honestly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Should have asked that first. <laughs> yeah. No, but. I didn't know, uh, but I'm sure, I mean, there's some great stuff in there. What a legendary drummer, you know? I'm yeah. just, I'm still shocked at the uh, 1981 gong, 40 inch Peisty gong with the stripes around the, uh, the, the rim, I guess the uh, holder went, went for like 300 grand or something. 286,000. Yeah. That's, That's a lot of money for a gong. For yeah. a gong. But yeah. where are you going to put that? You know? I get, yeah, that's true. It's probably a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> Definitely. Purchase that. Damn doctors <laughs> and <drummer>. lawyers. <laughs> Isn't it cool that our parents never said, be a doctor or a lawyer? They're just it like, is. you want to play the drums? Okay. We, yeah. We're no, they did say that. We just didn't listen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm super thankful my parents let me pursue this for a career. And they let me go out on, like, do tours when I was a teenager. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> leave home. And we, I guess we had cell phones at the time, but, you know, we didn't have GPS or anything. We would just print off MapQuest directions. MapQuest directions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is Ouch. back in the day. <laughs> yeah. That's what I used to do to go do my substitute teaching. That was my day job around here. When I moved here, yeah. I would substitute teach during the day, and then playing the clubs at night, you know. That's awesome. Whew. Yeah. Just grinding it out. The last time you'll ever see me wear khakis. You know? Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. What are you wearing? Uh... Khakis. You should you should actually do one of these episodes dressed how you used to uh, teach with my uh, brief brief case. briefcase, the, brief the roller briefcase, I had a briefcase, yeah, button down shirt. Got to do it. I had to do that. Yeah. We should actually do that. We should swap looks for one episode. I should dress like you, and you should dress like me. I hmm. could I could put on my valet jacket. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where did you park cars? The Sunset Grill or something like that? Yeah, it was like those restaurants. Oh, in the um, Hillsborough Village? Like private parties. Yeah, like restaurants over off West End. Yeah. Places like that. I hated it, man. Did you, and I couldn't even drive a stick. Did you ever get those douchebags that were like, hey, kid, be careful? Thankfully, no. Oh, but nice. there was one time at a private party with the owner of the company. I was like, you guys, I, I don't drive a stick shift. It's just, it's not, I don't. You know, I'm just, I, if it's a standard, I'm your guy. You know, or... Automatic, whatever. Um, 
cool, got it. We'll make a note of that. No worries. It's all good. So we're at this private party and it lets out and there's like a couple hundred people there. It's super <laughs> nice. Like, you know, black tie event yeah. and we're just running. We're just running and gunning and going to get cars or whatever. So I get a BMW. That's a stick shift. <laughs> super nice car. And I'm like, oh God. And I can't like go, hey, I can't, you know, you got to come back. It's like, you just got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So got it in reverse, doing the thing, pull it up. And like, I just staying in first gear the whole time, <sighs> but pull it up to like the, the entryway of this like giant mansion where the dude's standing there and waiting and like totally stall the car. Yeah. Out of <laughs> <laughs> like the clutch and the brake didn't hit. And it was yeah. like, you know, you're, like, you're topping out at like 6,000 RPMs on the way yeah, up the exactly. driveway. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that was me. And the guy was super nice. He was like, hey, you almost had it, didn't you? He almost had it. That's fun. Like, yeah. And he still tipped me, which is great. That's great. Yeah. Well, because he, he probably said, hey, at least you gave me the He shot. felt bad. Yeah. He felt bad for me. Yeah, that's all right. It's... Did you ever learn since? No. Oh, man. I don't it's need like, to. It's, it's, it's like, like, they don't make them. It's, yeah, it's nobody the, makes it's them. It's the millennial car security system. It is. Get a get a stick shift. Yeah. Yeah, no Nobody knows how to drive that. it. Yeah. I mean, I did. I, I practiced... I guess more after that, but I, you have to like live with that. You yeah. know, it's gotta be a car that your dad or I, somebody has that you can actually, yeah. I learned the concept of stick on a motorcycle, a dirt bike. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Like with a clutch. Yeah. Clutch on the left hand and the throttle and the, you know, you went through the gears on the left foot and, uh, I would actually, my first car was a Suzuki Samurai, or Samurai, 1988. There you go. Uh, with a five five speed stick shift. And I'd go back and forth in the driveway, just getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Over That's a good and over way again. to learn. I was I was a really boring kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. my dad taught me the uh, stick shift, and there was a lot of profanity. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure a ton of profanity and like smashing the invisible brake on the oh right God. side of the car. I had to teach Courtney because uh, we bought her a car when yeah. we were still dating. We were living together. Her car got uh, crap the bed, and then we traded that in. Got her a Nissan Sentra. That was a stick shift. That was a fun car to drive. Yeah. And she just, she had no idea how to drive it. Yeah. And we took it to a Costco parking lot and, <coughs> all right, let's let do her, this. Let her rip. That's how yeah. you learn. I love and it. That's how she learned. I wouldn't yeah. want to live in San Francisco and have to learn how to drive oh, a stick man. shift. Those Woo! hills, man. Nope. Brutal. When, when I, like, I, I had a, I had a stick out in LA and you'd be up there right on Doheny going up to sunset and that this, the hills like that. Yeah. yeah. Just like. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> Don't please, don't, out. Yeah. no one Sweats. pull up behind me, please. Yeah. <laughs> Sweats pouring out of your brow. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you know what no, it's thanks. time for? The fave five. Don't think about it. Favorite color? Uh, blue. That's all right. We're getting a lot more blue. Like these days. New York Giants blue. Even though I don't like the Giants as a football team, but you that like color blue. blue yeah. I love. Dr drums? Get a set of drums like that? I should. You should. Actually should. Call up I just Gretch. got like a green, green olive satin flame kit. That's pretty sick. Nice. Yeah. How many kits you got? Oh, God. <laughs> Was that one of the questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think 11. Yeah. 11 kits. Yeah. yeah. Seven at my place and then four in Cartage. Nice. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> um, favorite drink? Tequila. Just yeah. Straight. Just, wow. just yeah. not chilled or anything? Oh, uh, no, on the rocks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Tequila on the rocks, just a little bit. I don't like hot tequila. Oh, I mean, God, no. No. Yeah. I used to be a bourbon guy, but then that's just, I can't do it. You, yeah. It just it ran its me. course? Yeah, it sticks with me. You mean the next day? You yeah, just, I just gotcha. don't, feel, don't feel good. Yeah, they do say do the white liquors. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But that and just literally water. I mean, cold. I Are don't you a beer drink guy? sodas. Not... I used to be not as much anymore, yeah. you know, oddly enough. Yeah. Like if I'm going to have anything to sip on at home after a long day or something, just a little bit of tequila. That's, yeah. that's a nice. That yeah. PB and J beer. Oh yeah. Jim He's, and I, Jim and I had a, a, a PB and J beer. Like it was out. Incredible. It's a sour. Oh, a sour. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, it tastes just like the bread, the peanut butter. Really? It took me did, back to being six. Did that's you post awesome. that picture of yeah. me uh, drinking it last night? I put it up. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. On a beer podcast. On the Ales and Tales podcast dot com Instagram page. Yeah, everybody Follow everybody me. check out Ales Ales Jim's Tales. podcast. That's cool. uh, Jim, Another podcast we do. Yeah, that's Jim's, a good idea. Jim's yeah. got a mostly middle Tennessee business podcast. He's got yeah. his production company, it's your show dot co. Yeah. He's got his hands in a lot of things. What about um favorite dish or food? Pad Thai. Yeah. Me. My wife's Pad Thai. She's an incredible cook. Wow. Yeah. She's amazing. Like every year for my birthday, 
It's that's what bad you do. It's bad Thai. <laughs> but do you, do, do you, you don't do native Thai, do you? No. Yeah, I don't mess with that, man. No, I'll my, do like one star spicy. Maybe my colon two. would be like yelling at me. I just feel like it's so inconsistent wherever you go. That's you why know? I always tell them American zero. Americans are like, yeah, like the opposite of spicy. I want zero. <laughs> and there are guys like, you know, Mike Johnson, obviously. Yeah. And he'll get like five star or native hot sometimes. God, And just really? be fine. And then we'll go still work Mike in the Johnson, afternoon. Mike Johnson, Mike's lessons, Mike Johnson? No, the pedal steel player. Oh, okay, okay. Town. Yeah, right. incredible pedal steel player. Right. Plays a steel in a lot of the Aldine stuff. Well, it's okay. either him or Russ Paul, depending on the... Attitude and the, yeah, the vibe, the vibe needed. Uh, this is a tough one sometimes, but it could be based on, oh my God, I love this producer. I love this band. I love this drummer. This melody is incredible. Oh, I can't escape this thing. It's favorite song. Favorite song would be, uh, there's a John Bryan song called Strings That Tie to You. Yeah. That was on, uh, it was on a soundtrack for, what was that Jim Carrey movie? Uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only like two and a half minutes long, maybe. One of the most beautifully written, simple songs. And Jim Keltner plays on it, actually. Beautiful. And the count off even on it. They, they left the count off in in the song. Yeah. It's just everything about it is just music. Just beautiful music. Like if, if I'm on an airplane or something and you want throw to that chill. song out, throw the song on, stare out the window and it's like, all is right. I listen, the world. My version of that is uh, the Jeff Buckley. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh God. So good, man. So great. So good. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, that's one for me. Yeah, man. Movie. Going. Favorite movie. Favorite movie. Oh wow. That's a, um, interstellar. Oh yeah. Wow, we got that yesterday. Did you really? Yeah. We got that with someone yesterday or the other day. I bought a surround sound system at my house just to watch that movie. So the Christopher <laughs> Nolan It's so good. The, the Christopher Chris Nolan movies. Yeah, yeah. Christopher Nolan yeah. McConaughey. larger than life. It's so good. The yeah. writing in it's great. And the theoretical the you know, the theoretic physics of that movie is all accurate. Yeah. Like they worked with a physicist. And yeah. I was really big into like like string theory and like the CERN, like Large Hadron Collider and all that kind of stuff at that time. String cheese theory. Yeah, string cheese theory. Yeah. Yeah. Quantum physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like. So are you a reader? Do you like. Yeah, I don't. Not as much anymore. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I was I used a great to reader until I met my band and my, yeah. I, my IQ just dropped. It's <laughs> <know. that's> weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was crazy. My wife is a huge reader. I mean, she, she could read all day, every day. She reads like. Over a hundred books a year. Wow, it's wow. insane. That's cool. I don't you know. Just how she get the hand me downs. Yeah, and I'm just like, what are you doing? She's like reading. Like, cool. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what book are you reading? A book. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. How long have you been married? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Four years. See that? But oh, not too gosh. long. Wow. But how long did you guys date? We dated for three years before that. Nice. Yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. yeah. She just she would know that she would have to explain the whole thing. How, how many? How many kids? Yeah. One kid. One kid. So yeah. One and one and done. Oh, are you gonna get snip snip? Already did. You get Snippity it. Doodah. Get Done. The, you get the peas on the balls. It was yeah. It's perfect actually. <laughs> I did it's, that. It's the like. That's the cliche for a reason. Yeah. It's yeah. like truly works. That's what the doctor said. Wow. I know. So you we, guys, you guys said this is where this is where. Yeah, we had we had tried some more and just had some complications and work yeah. out and and even after we had our boy's name is Wyatt. He's a drummer already. What? Obviously, two I years old. Yeah. Already has his own little kid, and he can actually match tempo with you. Like I'll sit up, I'll sit him up on my lap. He'll play the ride or the hi hat, and I'll play everything else, and he'll keep time. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah. It's in his yeah. DNA. It's in the DNA. He plays piano. Like he'll kind of just pluck around on it. He yeah. sings too. Like we'll sing along to songs, and it's wild. It's great. It is. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. So we we lucked out. Huge blessing. He's the best kid. Ever. So even after I was like, man, I'm good. Yeah. I always wanted two kids or three kids or whatever. But it, I, whenever he showed up, I was like, we could be it's just spoiled. We're good. This guy, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. it. You know, rotten, spoiled, rotten. Spoiled, That's rotten. Your job. Yeah. He's a ham yeah. too. He's a performer. Yeah. He's going to be, he'll a- get in the middle of the room and do his ABCs for the whole family. He's going to be an entertainer. <laughs> I can relate. I used to he do is, that. Man. I'm <laughs> Spider-Man. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm still doing what do you, it. What do you mean used to? You're right. You're right, Jim. <laughs> so whenever we got him his kit, we bought him a, his his uh, grandfather, one of his grandfathers bought him a kit, like just a little, you know, Amazon $200 toy kind of kid kit, but it has heads, you know, and symbols. He got it for his second birthday and we surprised him with it, set it up. We had a, you know, party with the family at the house. Set up the kit, 
and he was surprised, super surprised when we I sat him down on it and he was locked in like locked, like started playing, got the big cheer. Everybody's clapping. And he just kept playing. <laughs> he didn't stop. And you then we're finally cheering, like, that's your job. okay, yeah. we're good now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's take a break. Let's get off the drums. <laughs> we have had enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, so uh, EvanHutchings.com? EvanHutchings.com. And then it, you're man. active on the, the, the Book of Face, the Instagram. Yeah, all the socials. I'm on there. Yeah. I love that. And yeah, then, uh, folks, if you are listening to... Country Radio, Kenny Chesney, Reba McIntyre, Luke Bryan, Jimmy Allen, Ronnie. It, 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 Evan is on the drums. Yeah. It's good. Thankfully. <laughs> it's really we good, We got man. Nate Smith. He's a top 10 right now. His, his latest single, Bulletproof. Great. Brian Martin, actually, too. Brian Martin, yeah. Yeah. Opened amazing. up some shows Ride, for us. Yeah. That's top 10. I think he's eight or nine right now. Yeah. So... So you occasionally cool. follow the charts and be like, I do. Yeah. I like to see, I just like to see what's up, where yeah, it how, up. how it's going, yeah. like what's climbing, what isn't climbing and not just songs I played yeah. on. I just kind of, it's interesting. Muso.ai. Yeah. Hey, so sometimes I'll be in the top, uh, 0.01% of drummers in the world. You are like in the point. I mean, it's, it's like, you're always like in the top. It is crazy. 50. I don't know how accurate that is. There's, there's no way. <laughs> Drummers on the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is it's wild. When I looked that's that up crazy. and it's like... If I'm in the mix somewhere, I'm like, that's cool. But I mean, the first couple of guys are like, yeah, you and Near and yeah. McHugh and... It's cool. It's yeah. such a cool... Get your studio tans. And everybody's just... The community, as you know, in this town is so tight and everybody's cool. You yeah. know, like, I'll hit up Chris yeah. or whoever. Like, hey, man... And, um, you know, let's grab lunch or whatever, yeah. you know, let's just hang or, Hey man, can you do this session for me? Or he'll do the same thing. Yeah. Hey man, can you fill in or whatever? And, and it's the, the ego. I mean, you have, everybody has an ego, like in a healthy way, usually yeah. and some more than others. Polite but, competition in Nashville. Yeah. Everybody's got each other's backs, which is cool. <clears throat> Big you know, yeah. how long does it take to you feel like you're part of the community? I guess there's a lot of, I think it's different variables. for everybody. Yeah. You know, I think like once you play on a number one song, you're kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm in the mix, you yeah. know, this is cool. Yeah. Not everybody's done that, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, you, people just start being more friendly to you. If you're right. at like a drummer hang or something, you so just like kind of notice, meritocracy. you get a little bit more respect yeah. from people. Yeah. Right like, this way, Mr. Hutchings. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Preferential treatment at Brick Tops. Yeah. Brick Tops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you know who I think I am? <laughs> for, for us, it's like preferential treatment at Bricks. There pizza. you go. That's our treatment. Hey, man, I'll take that. Yeah, uh, Bricks Pizza. Day. Bricks Pizza. The deviled eggs at Brick Tops. Man. With, the, Ooh, with the bacon with on the there? Bacon yeah. on it. Dear God. Yeah, and they, they've got those uh, Shanghai shrimp oh, with a yeah. martini. I, I'll probably do that tonight before bus. You should. That's our. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good our, call. That's our restaurant of choice when we go meet people. I know it's my spot. Now. That's a yeah. good spot, guys. If you want to buy us a drink, you want to run into us. Just the Brick Tops right there in Cool Springs. That's yeah. it, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see us there. Oh my god! Do you have any uh, fun like like uh, hobbies or things like you know cigars or, or golf? I, I oh love yeah, golf. The golf yeah, yeah, I do. I do the golf thing. That's kind of really the only other hobby thing that I do that I have time for. Yeah. And it takes. It can take up a lot of time. Hey, my yeah. dad plays four days a week, oh my gosh. and he has four hole in ones. Hell, really? that's amazing, man. My old Maybe man. Maybe four holes in one? Is that how Four hole in like, ones? I actually got a hole in one on my bachelor party weekend in wow. Scottsdale, Arizona. Nice. Cool. That's a great golfing town. It was amazing. Scottsdale. Yeah, with my brother-in-law and like some best friends. Scottsdale, yeah. I'm so happy that we finally got to do this and uh, it, it, it was worth it, man. It was worth the wait. Evan, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you man. so much for having me, man. Yeah, I'm congratulations on your work and well, what you do. So. Likewise, man. It's an honor to be here, man. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Folks, that's Evan Hutchings, evanhutchings.com. You listeners, thanks for watching the show. Thanks for listening to the show. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. Jim, as always, thanks for your time and talent. Thank you, sir. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Evan. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.